Hello, everybody, and welcome back to book one of the Rangers Apprentice, the early years series, the tournament at Gorlin. Today we're in chapter 36, so let's go ahead and get into it. Morgoroth reached across to refill Baron Peller's goblet. More wine, Lord Peller? he asked, giving the gray-haired Baron a winning smile. Behind the smile, he nursed the sarcastic thought that Peller was unlikely to ever refuse the offer of more wine. The network of veins on his nose and cheek bore testimony to his love of, and dedication to, more wine. Why, thank you, Lord Morgoroth, the nobleman replied. He hastily took a deep gulp of the wine remaining in his goblet, then pushed it forward so that his host could top it up. He regarded the brimming goblet contentedly, and raised it to his lips. Morgoroth was entertaining three of the barons who were favorable to his cause, although not yet fully committed. They were seated at a laden table in his sumptuous pavilion. The tent flaps were raised to allow a cool breeze to enter, and they had dined on roast pork, a spectacular game pie, and a wide assortment of vegetables. The remains of the meal lay in front of them, and they were now setting themselves to the task of finishing off the fine wine that Morgoroth had provided. He was an accomplished host, and was known to provide excellent fare for his guests. The three barons, Peller, Meager, and Cordell, had accepted his invitation eagerly. How is the king, Lord Morgoroth? inquired Meager. Morgoroth shook his head and assumed an unhappy expression. Not well, I'm afraid, he said sadly. His health deteriorates every day, and his spirits are lower than ever. I fear his son's actions in the north are behind it. He is vastly disappointed in Duncan, and that is affecting his attitude and, in turn, his health. He's not been strong since the assassination attempt. The poison took a lot out of him, physically and mentally. We're all lucky that you got wind of the attempt in time to save him, my lord, said Baron Cordell. Morgoroth gave a depreciating shrug. I simply did my duty. Any of you would have done the same. I've heard rumors, my lord, Peller said ponderously, that the king is thinking of disinheriting his son. Morgoroth raised his eyebrows in apparent surprise, although those rumors had been started by himself. That would be a most serious circumstance, Lord Peller. Peller shrugged. No more than Duncan's actions deserve, some might say. Cordell and Meager murmured agreement. Morgoroth shot a shrewd glance at the two of them. He had staged this banquet, to gauge their reactions to such an event. He felt a warm glow of satisfaction. His three guests did not represent major fiefs in terms of manpower or troops, but they did wield considerable influence with many of the other barons, particularly those who were so far uncommitted to either side in the obvious struggle for power going on in the kingdom. But if the king were to take such a step, he would have to name a successor in Duncan's place, Morgoroth said mildly. Again, Peller couched his reply in those ponderous tones that were his trademark, particularly when the wine level in his goblet had been lowered several times. I could think of no better candidate than yourself, my lord, he said to Morgoroth. But the Baron of Gorland Fief waved the suggestion aside. Me? I have no business being king, nor any wish to become one. I'm content with my lot. I believe there are many among us who would disagree, Lord Morgoroth, said Cordell. We would be happy to support your candidature for the position. After all, you are the foremost knight in the realm. Many of us look up to you. Again, 
Morgoroth shook his head, smiling reluctantly at the idea. But inside, he felt a surge of triumph. Now that the matter was out in the open, raised by someone other than himself, and greeted with approval by these three, he could progress his plan to the next stage. He had doubts that King Oswald would publicly denounce Duncan as his heir. But if the matter were already being discussed as a fait accompli, he could use a written proclamation marked with the king's seal to bring the matter to a head. Such a proclamation would need to be ratified by the Council of Barons, but he sensed that he would be able to gather a majority there. Let's hope it doesn't come to that, my lords, he said easily. I'm sure that if we put our minds to it, we can resolve this problem with Duncan. The three men mumbled agreement, although they sounded less than convinced. Morgoroth smiled to himself. The resolution of this problem might well to be to have Duncan killed, he thought. But before that, he would need Oswald to put Morgoroth's name forward as his successor. He was about to speak when someone approached the entrance to the dining section. He glanced up and saw Teasel standing expectantly. What is it? he snapped, anger creeping into his voice. He had left explicit instructions that his banquet was not to be interrupted. My lord, I have news, Teasel said nervously. Morgoroth frowned. Teasel wasn't unintelligent, but he was aware of Morgoroth's instructions that the luncheon should not be interrupted. Therefore, what he had to say must be important. Still, the interruption gave Morgoroth an opportunity to further ingratiate himself with his guests. It can wait, he said coldly. I am entertaining honored guests. He turned to smile at the three barons. Morgoroth was a black-hearted killer, but he was capable of exuding enormous charm, just as a viper might lull its victims before striking. He saw the looks of gratification on their faces and turned back to Teasel. Wait outside, he said curtly. His lackey turned and stepped outside the pavilion. Yes, my lord, he said as he withdrew. Morgoroth turned back to his guests, smiling expansively. Now, my friends, some more wine? Or perhaps some fruit? He gestured to the table, but already Cordell and Meager were rising from their chairs. Peller followed suit after a reluctant glance at the quarter-full wine jug on the table. Really, my lord, we've taken enough of your time, said Cordell and the others instantly concurred. Morgoroth feigned disappointment. But we were just beginning to enjoy ourselves, he said, although the real reason for the luncheon had been accomplished as far as he was concerned. No, we'd best get away. You have much to do as the host of this excellent tournament, Lord Morgoroth, and we're grateful for the time you've given us, said Meager, leading the way toward the doorway. The others followed, and as Morgoroth ushered them out, maintaining his expression of disappointment at their departure. Peller turned back to him and tapped the side of his nose with one finger. Remember what we discussed, my lord, he said. Morgoroth nodded, his expression serious and concerned. I will, Lord Peller, but I doubt that anything will come of it. After all, the rumors about Oswald's intentions are just that, rumors. Nevertheless, Peller intoned, these are troubled times, and in such times we look for a man to take firm control. Perhaps, said Morgoroth, but let's not make any decisions in haste. Peller nodded and followed the other two barons out into the sunlight and bustle of the tournament field. As he waved them goodbye, Morgoroth turned 
and surveyed the anteroom to his private dining space, along with several of his servants and his clerk. Teasel was waiting patiently, sitting on a stool. As his lord's gaze fell on him, he rose to his feet. Morgoroth jerked a thumb at the inner room. Inside, he said, and as the servants moved to enter to clear the table, he stopped them. You wait here. They stepped back, and he followed Teasel into the inner room, once again taking his seat at the head of the table. He gestured to the wine jug and one of the glasses left empty by his guests. Have some wine if you like. It'll go to waste otherwise. Teasel accepted this rather dismissive invitation eagerly. He knew that Morgoroth would have provided his finest wine from his cellars for the day's luncheon. He poured a glass and sipped appreciatively. Morgoroth waited a few seconds. Well, what's this important news that you've discovered? Teasel set the glass down reluctantly. He knew that after he delivered his news, there'd be no more time for wine drinking. My lord, he said, I'm sorry I interrupted, but Morgoroth waved the apology aside. No matter. I was finished with those three self-important bores anyway. Gave me an excuse to be rid of them. Now, what did you have to tell me? My lord, Tiller said warily. He knew Morgoroth's temper was only too well. It's Tiller. He's here. Tiller? Morgoroth's face was blank. For a moment, the name meant nothing to him. Tiller, Teasel repeated, emphasizing the name. Then, seeing Morgoroth's brows come together in anger, he elaborated. The false Duncan. The imposter who's been raiding across the northern border. That Tiller. Morgoroth's face cleared anger being replaced by curiosity. You say he's here? Here at Gorlin? What does he want? I told him never to show his face near me. Momentarily, he assumed that Tiller had come of his own volition. Teasel quickly disabused him of that idea. He's not here willingly, my lord. He's a prisoner. He's being held in Erold's compound. Erold? May the fates curse the man. Must he always interfere in my business? How does he come to have Tiller as a prisoner? Teasel shrugged. I have no idea, my lord. I was keeping an eye on Erold's compound, as you ordered, when I became aware that someone was being held prisoner in one of the smaller tents. I saw food being taken in, but whoever was being fed never came out. So I managed to get a look inside, and there he was, Tiller. He's chained up and can't move more than a few meters in any direction, but it's definitely him. Morgoroth stroked his chin reflectively. Why would Erold have brought him here? He wondered. He could be planning to contest your plans for the throne, my lord, said Teasel. After all, they depend on Prince Duncan being discredited and disowned, and if Erold produced Tiller, and had him swear he was impersonating Duncan on your orders, that could complicate things. True. But how has Erold got wind of my plans? Morgoroth was thinking aloud, rather than asking questions. But Teasel replied, nevertheless, The rumors are all over the tournament, my lord, that the king plans to disinherit Duncan. It wouldn't take much for Erold to guess that you were behind them and were planning to replace him. True, said Morgoroth thoughtfully. Very true. But how did Erold get a hold of him? I can make inquiries, my lord. I'm sure I... Teasel began, but Morgoroth waved him to silence. Time enough to do that later. If we start asking around, Erold might get wind that we know Tiller is here. No. I have something more urgent for you to do with friend Tiller. What's that, my lord? Teasel asked. Morgoroth turned to look at him. Not for the first time, 
Teasel was reminded of the eyes of a snake about to strike. Kill him, Morgoroth said. And that will bring us to the end of chapter number 36. As always, thanks for joining me, thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time in chapter 37. God bless, and have a good one.